Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This video is in a four part series on my channel this month about applying to university to study medicine. And in this series, I'm gonna to be touching on work experience and volunteering, extracurriculars, interviews, and personal statements. Just a bit of background, I applied through UCAS last year as an undergraduate, and I applied to the universities of Cambridge, Edinburgh, Exeter, and Cardiff. I received interviews at Cambridge, Exeter and Cardiff and I got offers from all four of my universities and really excitingly I'm starting my first term at the University of Cambridge studying medicine very very soon. I really hope you find this video helpful, I've really tried to make these videos as informative and useful as possible and yeah I really hope you enjoy this video and stay tuned for the next episode. I'm going to be talking about work experience and volunteering for medicine and I've been asked a few times like what work experience I actually did and I've never really addressed it so I thought that I'd put that in this video alongside advice for work experience if you're applying for medicine at university and how to use work experience and volunteering in your personal statement. So there are three main parts to this video. If you find it useful then do give it a thumbs up and share it with your medical friends, I don't know, that made no sense, but I hope you enjoy it, I hope you find it useful and we're just gonna get straight on into it. Firstly, I'm gonna talk about what work experience and volunteering I did, just to give a bit of background. So I did three days at like a rheumatology clinic in the mornings and then in the afternoons I was in the acute care unit slash minor injuries unit. So I would shadow a consultant rheumatologist in the morning and I would just watch her have her normal appointments with her patients. And then in the afternoons I went over to the acute care unit as I said or the minor injuries unit and I would see more of like a ward setting and critical care rather than like arranged patient consultations. I can't speak today. Another placement that I did was just one day and it was basically a bit of time spent in day surgery so I saw like pick lines being inserted and stuff like that. That was only a really short amount of time and then the majority of that day was spent in radiology so stuff like CT scans, MRI scans. I just spent the day kind of watching those being done and like sitting with a doctor whilst he was doing ultrasounds, all that kind of stuff. And my final placement was probably my favorite placement and that was in a geriatric ward. So I shadowed a junior doctor, I think she was like an FP2 or something, and just followed her around, went on like ward rounds with the consultants and registrars and stuff and kind of just got to follow the patients especially because I was there for a longer period of time it was really beneficial because I kind of got to know the patients a little bit so in total I did about nine days of work experience which at the time I thought was not enough but I'll get into that later on in the video and as for volunteering I did about half a year at a Bernardo's charity shop um, about two plus years ago like it was quite a while ago but like I did do it um, and as you can imagine that was just like volunteering in a charity shop so kind of sorting out like the shop floor all that kind of stuff helping out basically at the shop and more recently I did about a year and a few months of volunteering at a care home which is probably the more relevant volunteering I was with like the activities team and would just kind of go around entertain the residents for a little bit and yeah that was pretty much all I did in terms of like work experience slash volunteering. Moving on to advice for work experience and volunteering, this is in absolutely no particular order whatsoever because I just wrote what came to mind and it's probably going to be a jumbled mess but like the points are hopefully useful so the first thing that I wanted to touch on is that you are doing work experience to experience what life is like as a doctor and ultimately to see if that's a career for you and a lot of the time work experience for medicine applications kind of gets like lost in the sense that it's like required like you need to do work experience and people do work experience for the sake of doing work experience you know and I think it's really important to still use it for what it's supposed to be so use work experience to decide 
whether you can really see yourself in a career doing medicine because it's really not for everybody and I have a friend who was gonna apply for medicine and then he did work experience and really decided that he didn't like it and he didn't want to be a doctor so it's really crucial that whilst you're using work experience to strengthen your application you're also using it to really decide on whether this is something that you want to be doing and applying for. My next point is to apply early early when i say early i mean early how many times can i say early <laughs> it's so competitive to get a place for work experience and hospitals have no obligation to give you work experience and it's so hard to actually find somewhere that will let you do work experience just apply as early as you can to maximize your chances of actually getting a couple of placements i personally applied in october of year 12 i started applying for placements throughout the year, even for the next summer. I didn't get any placements that I applied for in the half term holidays. Um, so I applied for placements in the October half term and February half term and I didn't get any of them. Um, the only placements that I managed to get were in the summer holidays between year 12 and year 13. But even then, I applied for those placements way early so just don't leave it till the last minute because you are gonna be stressed and it's much harder to actually find somewhere that's gonna take you on such a short notice. The next thing I thought that I would quickly mention in this video is that you're probably gonna get rejected a lot, which ties in with what I previously said, like they have no obligation to give you a placement and sometimes they have no one that can be shadowed by you or like take care of you, I guess. And you're gonna get rejected a lot and I applied to these three or four hospitals in my area about 10 times um, and I kept sending off applications they kept emailing me back like we're not actually taking um, applications for work experience here right now send another application off at this time so then I would do it and they just send me the same again and I tried so many times eventually I gave up and people do say that universities expect work experience but they do understand that work experience is difficult to find and especially if you don't have any like connections in the field of medicine but as long as you've tried I don't think a university can reject you purely on the basis that you don't have work experience if you've actually tried to get it. And there are also loads of different options for work experience. It's not just a hospital. Like you can go to the GP, which actually GPs are harder to get work experience from, I think, than hospitals because they have like their patient confidentiality and the GPs that I rang up all said that they don't do work experience placements. For example, doing work experience in a lab or doing a research project about something that interests you in medicine. Think about other things that you could do to show your interest in exploring the field of medicine because it's also not all about the clinical aspect, it's also about the theory and the science behind it. This next piece of advice is like my main piece of advice. Like if you take anything from this video, do this. Um, and that is, to keep a diary of your placements. So write down each day at the end what you did, what you saw, what you learned, what you took from the day, all that kind of stuff, and just keep a record of it for each day of all your placements because it will make your personal statement writing so much easier if you can actually like see on a page what your thoughts were that day and you can also like add to it later on to like reflect on what you saw with hindsight and it's also quite useful to have for interviews because if they're like panel interviews they might ask you about work experience or volunteering that you've done and it's just so much easier to be able to just like flick through this little diary that you have instead of trying to do it all from memory. The next thing is a mistake or a mistake that I made which is to spread out your work experience and don't leave it all till the summer between year 12 and year 13 which is as we all know what I did um, and sometimes it is unavoidable like in my case I just couldn't get it for February or October and I could have applied earlier like I know I could have applied for placements 
well earlier in year 11 but if you can avoid it don't leave all of it till the summer because the summer is already stressful as it is you just finished your year 12 mocks you only have six weeks and you have UK CAT revision probably and BMAT depending on when you're taking the BMAT to do as well as writing your personal statement over summer like there's a lot that you have to get done and if you leave a bunch of work experience placements all till the summer it's just going to make it 10 times more hectic the next thing on my little plan isn't even really a piece of advice it's just about volunteering and i really think that volunteering is the best form of work experience for medicine if you do it in a healthcare setting such as a care home because it's a long-term commitment like you're there every week or multiple times a week if you're that dedicated you get to see the progression of residents at the care home and you really get a feel for what it's like working in a caregiving setting um, more so than you can get if you just do like five days in a hospital it's much more eye-opening and you learn so much more from it there is an overarching theme to this video and that is that work experience is hard to get i mean shock right my next point is that it's really quality over quantity so you can get weeks and weeks and weeks of work experience but that's no use if you got nothing from it even if you really don't have that many placements it's not about that it's about what you learn from those placements and how much you engage with them and how much you took away from them my next tip is for after your work experience placement so if something really interested you during that placement or if something really stood out to you read up on it and like go that extra mile it's a simple thing but it really will make your application stand out because it shows that you have a passion for medicine and that you're interested in it enough to go away and read up on something and my last point in this section is about work experience for other career paths that you may be considering and again it's about exploring your options and deciding whether medicine really is what you want to truly do i just think it might be useful and there's no harm done in getting some work experience for a different career path that you are considering if you have the time to do so. So I personally did four days in a chemical company. My other career option was doing chemistry. I didn't end up mentioning it in my personal statement because I had no space, but I did apply to Durham to do chemistry as my fifth option. The university might ask you for a separate personal statement for the course that you applied to do there. We're now moving on to the final part of this video which is how to use work experience and volunteering in your personal statement and your application featuring my personal statement. The main point that I have is don't just list things that you've done on your personal statement. Most medicine personal statements have a large proportion of the characters used for work experience and volunteering and I really think that's appropriate when you think about the fact that you are supposed to really be reflecting on it as well as mentioning in more detail what you did during the placements and when you put all that together like it's quite a meaty chunk. Um, so personally I had one paragraph for work experience and one paragraph for volunteering. So to explain a bit further, basically relate what you've seen during your work experience to learning about the qualities needed to be a doctor. So for example, on my personal statement, um, I wrote the need for compassion yet persistence when dealing with difficult patients that's probably not the best example of what i'm trying to say and when you're talking about volunteering make sure to go into further detail if you can about your role there and really make it personal and say what you did talk more about a certain resident that you met and like your interactions with said resident and what it taught you and that's just so much more powerful in a personal statement than just saying like I saw people with dementia and how people dealt with people with dementia you know it's much more powerful when it comes from your own personal experiences with certain individuals and what's good about volunteering as well is that it is a long-term commitment 
So you can gain skills from it, which you can then write on your personal statement. So I, for example, again, um, wrote that I developed extensive listening skills. And what's even more important is to then relate these skills to how they are supporting your application for said career or for said university degree. So basically why these skills are important to have as a doctor. So I followed my extensive listening skills section up with colon invaluable in a profession based upon cooperation. And that kind of shows that I gained these skills through doing this, which I think I could have probably made that a bit more well expressed if I said exactly how I developed listening skills, but it is a bit tight for characters, so like you can't write everything. But then saying that these listening skills are needed in this profession because there's so much cooperation between doctors and patients, doctors and doctors, and it shows that you've learned something from this experience and that you've gained these skills and that you've recognised that you are going to need these skills for this career that you're trying to get into. As I mentioned previously, really try to get yourself involved in your personal statement when it comes to work experience and volunteering and that made no sense. Really try to make it come across in your personal statement that you were engaged in these placements and in this volunteering and that you actually got involved and you didn't just sit there and watch. It just makes you seem much more interested in what you were doing. The more personal, the better. It is a personal statement at the end of the day and the more you write about your own kind of experiences and things that really stood out to you and the more detail you go into, even if it's just briefly, it's gonna make your personal statement stand out so much more than the generic like, I saw this, I did this, I do this, blah, blah, blah. It really kind of makes it much easier to see what you're like as a person when an admission tutor is reading your personal statement. And last point of the video, we are here. Um, it is about interviews because, as I said, how to use work experience and volunteering in your application. For interviews, make sure that you go over in your head or on paper if you've written it down what you did during work experience and what you learned from it and what you've learned from volunteering and specific maybe instances throughout that really stood out to you because they may well ask you and I wasn't expecting to get asked at Cambridge about anything in my personal statement because people said like oh they don't do that but I got asked about my personal statement, namely volunteering and work experience, like they really went to town and they asked me to expand further beyond what I wrote in my personal statement. So make sure that you can do that and make sure that you have read up on what you did and are able not just to repeat what you said on your personal statement, but really go into more detail. And especially since it's an interview setting, your mind can easily go blank and it's very much easier to remember something that you read like a day ago than something that you did six months ago. If you can get your volunteering or work experience that you've done into your answers at MMI stations and like relate what they're asking you to your personal experiences, that can be really impressive. So even if they don't ask you about work experience and volunteering directly, you can try and like get it in there. That's pretty much all I have to say for this video. Um, I really do hope you found it useful, like I really tried to rack my brain and think about everything that I could give advice on to do with work experience and volunteering, so yeah, I hope you found it helpful and if you did then be sure to give it a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to my channel, the button is below this video, there will be obviously more videos in said medicine series so stay tuned for those and you can also follow my social medias for updates on the medicine series and just generally what I'm up to, the handles are always in the description box and yeah thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one, bye!